Hello folks and welcome back for a video. It is a rainy, wet day here in Nova Scotia today. I try to include that in most videos and I still get people asking where I'm at, what state I'm in. Uh, Nova Scotia. I'm in Nova Scotia on the south shore of Nova Scotia. Absolutely beautiful here. Uh, come check it out anytime. Anyway, uh, today's video, the 080 is finally fixed. So it's been at the dealer for two weeks as of Monday. Today is Wednesday and it's fixed. Once I pick it up, I will tell you guys what was wrong with it, what they did to get it fixed. And it ended up, even though I lost it for two weeks and it was getting a little bit frustrating, you know, having a machine down for two weeks is never good, especially in peak season. They, they did things right. They saved me a bunch of money in the end on the repairs. I'll get into that once I pick it up. The other part of this video is I'm using the Diamond C for the first time in, whew, probably like two months, I'm gonna guess. I'll have to go back to see when I bought my my K Trail, my K Trail, my new my new galvanized gooseneck, and then I'll know. Because pretty much once I bought that trailer, I haven't used this trailer since. I've used my K Trail and my old Sure Track, which is right down there. And once we jump in the truck, I'll tell you a few reasons why. Nothing wrong with the trailer whatsoever. You see, it's hooked up. Um, had to gear up some new chains and binders and stuff because I only had enough binders and chains geared up for two trailers. Well, you know, obviously I have three. So you can see a bunch of brand new yellow uh, ratchet binders and I got one of my old red ones there. I had a lot of chain laying around so I was able just to buy some new hooks and geared up some, some new chains for that. I absolutely love this trailer. It is my favorite trailer overall. Uh, so you're asking like, why haven't I used this trailer in so long? Well, even though I love this trailer, it is my highest maintenance trailer, I guess you could call it. And what I mean by that is it's so nice because I have the hydraulic dovetail, I have the hydraulic jacks, uh, the hydraulic disc brakes, which are amazing. It rides nice with the hutch suspension. Uh, it's, it's awesome, 35 feet long. 40k rated trailer like you can't get a better you can't get a better trailer than this you honestly can't but i've had issues with every single one of my super duty sending 12 volts to the trailer and because of all this hydraulic stuff there's a big battery in here and the battery runs the brakes it runs the dovetail it runs the jacks and if the truck is not sending 12 volts then i'm constantly having to hook this up, the battery up, and charge it. It has a nice battery port on the outside here that you can hook it up and charge it, which is nice. But the idea is there's a trickle charge that comes off your 12 volt, feeds into your battery, and keeps your battery you know, charged in most situations, unless it's like super, super cold or something, or you got a lot of short trips where you're using, you're using the ramps and the, and, and the, the jacks a lot but just driving, it should be charging as I'm driving. I think I may have it fixed now, but for the longest time, I have to constantly charge this battery, which I just did at the house because it hasn't moved for so long. The other thing about this trailer, and I bought it on purpose, I bought the 35 foot, so it's an extra five feet longer than both my SureTrack and my new galvanized trailer. And getting into a lot of tight spaces like I do with the, with the cell tower sites, the extra five feet can make a big difference. And then the truck itself. You know, you've seen my videos where I had the little Ram, the single cab truck with that new, with that new uh, K trail. And I can get into areas so much easier than I can with this truck right here. That's a little bit of a factor, but more so it's just being able to hook onto that trailer and go versus having to worry about charging this one. But like I said, I think I have this figured out now. No fault of the trailer whatsoever, more so the truck. But it's starting to pour here right now, so let's jump inside. All right, so as I was saying, uh, those are the reasons why I haven't used this trailer for quite a, quite a while now. But, you know, I've been using, I've been hauling it right now for 10 minutes and I absolutely love it. The thing hauls so nice, the brakes are so strong. Uh, the second that I get there and I chain it down, 
and I'm, I'm sitting in the machine using the remote to, to raise and lower the the uh, the ramps the ramp I'm gonna love it the dovetail and driving it home with the brakes and how this thing handles I'm gonna love it so <laughs> I know that now that I'm, I'm using it again I'm gonna want to use it more and more also I wanted to use that K trail just to see you know how it worked I do really like that trail that trailer has some really awesome brakes it has the hutch suspension it is a nice little trailer for sure uh, but it's not this it's not this and the funny thing is I bought this trailer a year ago basically pretty close to a year to the date of when I bought my K trail and this was cheaper than my K trail that's how much stuff's gone up in a year yikes but anyway we are en route to Nova International in Aylesford to pick up the 80 and then I'll fill you in on what was going on with that all right well she is loaded on we are pulling out of Nova International here in Aylesford ready to put this thing back to work so once we get on the highway I'll sort of fill you guys in on what exactly happened what they did and uh, you know what they did to save me some money compared to what they could have done all that stuff all right folks so let's chat about what actually was the issue with the machine now if you don't remember from the video where I hauled this there basically what was happening is the machine worked great with the mulcher with the bucket for the first like 30 45 minutes of running the machine but then once it got warmed up and after that period of time the, the thing just was lazy the stick was lazy the boom was lazy uh, the mulching head wasn't wasn't doing what it should do I was thinking pump shouldn't be filters because I had replaced them at 3,000 hours like you're supposed to the only other thing that I was thinking it could be was the fluid was getting too old and too thin and once it heated up then it was just like water basically it wasn't providing the pump you know pushing wasn't providing the pressure that it should be but what it ended up being was the compensating spool the compensating valve and I'll show you when we get back where that's located on your hydraulics and that's what was acting up so the the spool it wasn't it's hard to explain really he just explained it all to me I don't know much about the hydraulics and all this stuff to be honest uh, he explained it to me but it just wasn't after after that period of time it just wasn't providing the PSI it was losing pressure so it wasn't pumping out the pressure that it should which affected the boom the stick and the mulcher because the mulcher valve is after this valve so it was affecting everything from there on so what uh, so what they did um, it took a while to diagnose it like quite a while they ended up giving me a break on the hours which was which was very nice uh, Joel is the service manager at Aylesford Nova International thank you Joel I mean the bill was still you know like 3,500 bucks but it could have been a lot worse and I'll explain to you why so we only really needed like a small section of that assembly and no way could we get it from Kubota you had to buy the whole thing and we couldn't we couldn't come up with parts anywhere they couldn't put parts like laying around or from other machines or whatever so if I would have had to have gotten all new assemblies it would have been around six thousand dollars in parts and then everything basically on top of the hydraulic um, chamber and stuff which I'll show you that would have had to gone torn off taken over to their table and, and torn apart and labor is 120 bucks an hour so it would have been six grand in on just parts already the, the, the diagnostic stuff that they had into it and then more labor for 
building, like rebuilding it. So we would have been in, I'm guessing, we would have been close to fifteen thousand dollars in this for this build. So thirty five hundred bucks, even though it's expensive, uh, it's looking good compared to that. So what they did, what Joel did, he made the call on it and I completely agreed with him. He said, this is what I would have done if it was my machines. This is what I did for yours. He took that spool off of the blade and the, like the, the blade and the angle function and he replaced those two with the stick and the boom. And he ran it for uh, an hour, like on two different occasions and it held its 4,000 PSI. So, yes, absolutely. If my blade gets a little lazy, who really cares? That I'm, I'm not going to be all that concerned with that. So that's what was going on. Again, I'll show you when I get back where that stuff is. Um, but, yeah, I mean, down the road, you know, maybe the pump might go. It's close to 5,000 hours, or it is like 5,000 hours on it now. So, But for now, the pump was fine. Uh, he did replace one of the filters it's because he was basically already in there anyway so they did replace one of the filters that's fine it's like 150 bucks or something but yeah it's on the back of the trailer and it's ready to go to work so that's the main thing so it has to go to work and and pay for this now to the trailer we are back in the trailer uh hauling and i can tell you that when i was at the dealer there i Lo uh, like I lowered the ramp with the remote. I got in the I got in the machine, loaded the machine on the trailer, and the way that I load it, I basically load it right over top of the of the axle. So I was in the machine, pulled forward past the, like the breaking point of the dovetail, and raised the ramp up and then backed up to where I wanted to be without having to get out of the cab. And let me tell you, that was nice. Not and then on top of not having to uh, get out there and throw those ramps up and down by hand was also very nice. Um, this this machine here has only been on this trailer probably three or four times, and I have yet to find sort of the sweet spot for it. But uh, it feels pretty good, but it's got a little bit of bob. It's one thing about this trailer, and I find the K trail, so it might be something to do with the hut suspension. Is they don't like. Uh, they don't like a lot of tongue weight. It seems like the more tongue weight you put on them, the more bobbing you get. But anyway, some people, uh, Sam said that he he corrected his by by not chaining anything down uh, on the dovetail. But um, I'll try that. I'll, I'll I'll give it a try. Maybe next time I haul it, I'll I'll put the boom to the back instead of the boom to the front, and I'll I'll give that a whirl. You know what am I what do I got to lose? But I do find that my new machine, my my 80, my Sani, and my 95 haul nicer than, than this machine for whatever reason. I honestly have no clue why, but they do. But yeah, the brakes are, are strong. Uh, it really does, you know, other than a little bit of bobbin, it rides really nice. This is a heck of a trailer. I mean, it is a heck of a trailer. Very, very lucky to have, to have this trailer, that's for sure. Um, got it before things went crazy for pricing and then huge shortages too so uh, you know really lucked out on that well it wouldn't be a trip back home from the valley if I didn't record if I didn't record South Mountain here so let's see what this thing will do today so load is at 70% right now for fifth gear really getting into it so load is at a hundred right now so uh, I'm even though my foot's not to the floor with the banks pedal monster uh, it is to the floor deal no 
big deal. 265 tires. All right, well, here we are. Back at home. Another trip in the books for the 450. And the Diamond C. This thing, well, this thing's worked its butt off its whole life. But this trailer worked its butt off from the time I bought it in like May or April, whatever, of last year until uh, like January something. Like this thing was gone like every day. I didn't have the, the new trailer, so it was this one and the old girl. That thing, that's just, <laughs> that's been abused. It's still there, still holding, still junk steel. But anyway, glad to have this thing back. So this thing is gonna be getting hooked up to the FAE Malter first thing tomorrow morning. Heading on to that road building site, that 1200 foot road. That's where this is going. We're gonna do some mulching with this this bad boy tomorrow. Check it out, make, it, make sure everything's good. And then next week, this machine is gone to New Brunswick. Who knows when I'll see it again. Uh, trailer, you know what? Now that I use it for a day, I'm like, ugh, why did I wait so long? I do like the new trailer, obviously, but it is not one of these guys, that's for sure. This is such a nice trailer. Uh, if I was only hauling equipment, I would get the 30 foot, but I haul other stuff with this from time to time and I have plans for this trailer. So that's why I got the 35 foot versus the 30 foot. But if I was only hauling equipment, it would be a 25 or a 30 foot. Just so much easier to get into area. But anyway guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Glad to have this machine back glad to be using this trailer again uh, very very uh, lucky to have this trailer like I said before um, it's a heck of a trailer but uh, yeah that's just another video in the books and a day in the books tomorrow might get some footage we'll have to wait and see of, of mulching I don't know what's going on Bauer's not feeling very good he's got a high fever and uh, anyway one of those things so we'll have to see what I do tomorrow but regardless this is heading to site drop it off for John at least. Anyway folks, that's it. Take care, stay safe, we'll see you next time.